Next company to present here today will be Mubai Pharma. And uh, beside me here, I, we have Anna Jung, the CEO of the company. I will leave the word to you, Anna. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Anna Jung, and I'm the CEO of Moberg Pharma. So uh, a short brief introduction to Moberg Pharma. We're a Swedish pharmaceutical company that bases our products on proven compounds that reduces uh, development time and risk uh, to market. And currently our lead project is in onychomycosis uh, called MOB15. And there we recently completed two large phase three studies on more than 800 patients. And based on those positive results, uh, we're aiming to register in Europe. Uh, so we're planning to uh, um, hand in a registration file during next year. And with uh, average processing times, that would mean that we would expect approval early 2023 and uh, to be able to launch uh, by the end of 2023. And that launch we're planning together with our partner Bayer, uh, 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 that is our commercial partner for, for Europe. Uh, in parallel, looking at the US market, there we think that one additional phase three study will be needed. And the big advantage with, with doing one additional phase three study for the US market is that we think that we can also shorten the treatment time, uh, enabling superior claims uh, uh, that could be used worldwide. And looking in general uh, in our business model, we do have partnerships in place for a majority of the big markets. So Bayer for Europe and the brand name Canestem, that is the leading OTC uh, fungus uh, brand name. We have Taisho for Japan. We have Donku, that is the market leader within dermatology in Korea. And we also have Cypher for Canada. So we like to work with leading local companies uh, that have a, a le market leading position in, in their specific market. And this is actually not the first time that we're launching an onychomycosis product. Uh, 10 years ago, we took Kerasol Nail to the market uh, and it quickly became a success. Uh, we sold that product uh, in over 33 markets and we sold it via partners uh, for the majority of the world. Uh, but for US, we built our own uh, sales company and we're, uh, we're planning to do exactly the same thing with Mob15 that is uh, uh, the follow-up product uh, from, from Carousel Nail, but with an even greater uh, uh, potential to, to kill off the fungi, basically. So with the Carousel Nail, we built a, a franchise uh, that had sales, annual sales of 440 million Swedish kronas. And actually two years ago, in um, we sold that franchise uh, for 1.4 billion Swedish kronas. So now the goal is to do that journey once more. And I'm actually going to jump directly into data and looking at the results from our two phase three trials. In total, more than 800 patients. Uh, we did one study in North America and one study in Europe. And for the North American study, we uh, achieved a macological cure, that is killing of the fungi, in 70% of the patients. And for Europe, the figure was even higher. It was 84%. And uh, that should be compared to gold standard treatment today, that is oral terbinafine. So it's the same molecule that we're using, but oral instead of topical. And that is on pair. So that's also roughly 70% uh, uh, mycological cure. And then we have uh, a lot of topical alternatives out there. And all of them, they, they're, they're normally between 50% and 30% uh, mycological cure. So basically our product is on pair with oral tabernafin, that is the gold standard. So out of those 5 million scripts that are prescribed each year in the US, 3 million out of those are for oral tabernafin. And uh, we're better than any of the topical alternatives. Uh, of course, uh, when it comes to oral tabernafin, 
the challenge is that terbenafine is really good at killing off the fungi, uh, but it, it do come with some side effect, uh, effect issues uh, with drug-drug interaction and the risk of liver damage. Uh, so basically, we're better than the topicals when it comes to killing off the, the fungi. We're on par with oral terbinafen, but without taking the route throughout the body, we just uh, apply it locally instead. What was a bit surprising with our data was that although we did kill off the fungi, uh, that did not correspond into a complete cure, that is the normally looking nail. And, and uh, the, the knowledge is that uh, the, uh, if you kill off the fungi, then the nail will return to, to normal appearance. It may take some time, but it will return to normal appearance. So we uh, investigated this in, in a large detail uh, involving all the key opinion leaders looking at these nails. And the conclusion that we ended up with was that the vehicle that transports terbinafine through the nail, it's, it's excellent at, at transporting terbinafine, but one side effect is it's doing so by increasing uh, the water level in the nail, uh, increasing the hydration. And when you increase the hydration of the nail, then you get a, a, a whitishness discoloration. It's a temporary whitishness uh, discoloration due to this high water content. And once the water content normalizes, so once you stop treatment, uh, then uh, this uh, whitish effect disappears. But having that whitishness in the majority of the nails, that meant that we did not show as high complete cure rate as we think that this product would deliver if we shortened the treatment time. And we do have some, some, some good data points supporting that. So we know that we get sufficient amounts of terbinafine into the nail if we shorten the, the treatment. Because if we compare the levels of terbinafine with MOB15, our drug, and oral terbinafine, then we achieve 40 times higher levels under the nail uh, with our drug compared to oral terbinafin. Uh, so we did biopsies in, in the phase two. So that's a, a data point that we know. And for oral terbinafin, the normal treatment regimen that is once daily for, uh, for three months. So three months treatment with oral terbinafin is sufficient to achieve these, uh, uh, these levels of, of killing the fungi. Uh, and uh, therefore we should be able to treat for not more than three months and achieve this high mycological cure and high complete cure. So that's basically what we want to do in the next study. There we want to uh, shorten the treatment time, so no, not more than three months and then once weekly follow up. And then we think we will shift on this curve uh, to, to the right so that the mycological cure is also followed by a high complete cure. And uh, 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 MOB15, it's, it's to a very large extent built on the know-how of Carousel Nail and that franchise that we built around Carousel Nail. And actually looking at the ingredients, MOB15 is to 89% uh, Carousel Nail and then it's 10% uh, um, Turbinafin, the, the active component. Uh, so we sold more than 15 million units of Carousel Nail on the market while, while we had that product. And we had very few uh, complaints in even fewer talking about this whitishness of the nail. So it's a very similar product. Uh, and the reason for that, that is that it's dose dependent. So you have to achieve a certain level of uh, water content in the nail for this whitishness to become a problem. So therefore we're also confident that we should not see this whitening effect if, if we stop treatment after two to two, two, three uh, months. Uh, and we do have a very clear path forward uh, for MOB15 where we uh, aim for um, Filing for registration during next year, that would uh, mean approval in the EU in 2023 and of course also launch together with Bayer. 
And in parallel, we would do one additional uh, phase three study in the US, uh, which could lead to FDA approval in 2026. And onychomycosis is a huge problem. 10% of, of, of the general population has it, and it's increasing by age, and uh, it's more common in males than females. Um, and the, the total market is roughly 250 to 500 million dollars for MOB15. Uh, a majority, pretty much half of the market is in the US where we want to keep our own rights. And then you have other RX mark markets, roughly one fourth. And then you have the OTC markets, especially in EU, uh, with one fourth of the value. And there we can go quickly to, to market in 2023. Uh, and uh, some news uh, that happened last week was that we announced that we are planning a fully guaranteed financing for MOB15, financing both this registration work and the, the clinical work with one additional phase three study. And this will happen very soon. So we have an EGM planned for December 1st, and then the subscription period will be December 7 to 21st. And uh, we have subscription commitments uh, by, by the company's major share uh, owner, Östergaard Stiftelsen. And we also get some new good investors in entering to the company like Neumenberg and Forer Capital. What we also announced yesterday, actually, is that, that we're uh, spinning off and listing Buppy, our second project, in a separate company, Onkosange. And also there we have a secured financing. In that case, it's 70 million. And uh, uh, Buppy, it will be distributed uh, to our share owners. So the proposal is that 10 shares in Moberg Pharma uh, that uh, will allow you to receive one share in Onkosange. And this will happen in January or February next year, targeting uh, a listing at NASDAQ First North uh, during the first quarter 2021. Uh, so to summarize, uh, we have a clear path forward based on our two successful phase three studies, more than 800 patients. Our goal is to launch in EU by the end of 2023, together with our partner Bayer. Uh, in parallel, we want to do one additional study in the US that would also enable us to shorten treatment time, which would be very positive for, for all patients. We do have my major partnerships in place for, for the big markets, uh, having milestones of, of more than $120 million and, and product sales revenue on top of that. And we want to keep the rights in the US to ourselves. And this is not the first time we're doing it. We want to do exactly the same journey as we already did with Carousel Nail, but now with MOB15 that has an even greater potential given this high macological cure. Killing off the fungi where uh, MOB15 is outstanding and world leading when it comes to killing the fungi. So I'm looking forward to taking this road forward and I'll open up for questions. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Anna, for that presentation. Uh, I would like to start off with uh, how are you going to use the proceeds? Uh, uh, you're taking in the rights issue right now for and taking the uh, MOB15 to the market. Can you tell us about the proceeds? How are they going to be used? They're basically going to be used with these two major activities that we're looking at going forward. The registration in EU, uh, so the, the filing for registration, and also this uh, uh, additional phase three study in the US. So basically it's half-half, I would say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> looking forward, what kind of milestones do you expect to achieve? Maybe in the near term and even mm -hmm. looking forward, maybe into 2021? Yeah, so looking at 2021, a lot of focus will be on, on this filing of, of this registration because it's of course a huge task for a small company like Moberg Pharma uh, to, to handle a registration. So that will be the major accomplishment during 2021. 2021 is to file in Europe and we're also planning to have a dialogue with FDA and perhaps also have the possibility to start that North American study. We're looking forward following you uh, Anna and thank you for your presentation here today. Thank you. Thank mm. you.